Good morning, everyone. Well, Andy was here at 10 till 9, says, hey, Andy. I mean, Aaron says, hey, Andy. Vicky says, good morning from sunny California. Listening in while doing quail chars. Good morning, Vicky. Aaron says, good morning, Vicky. Andy says, good morning. Good morning, Andy. Well, we're going to wait for people to get in here. And I got a few things to talk about. That's not it. There we go. David says, good morning. And I say, good morning, David. Christina says, morning. Kelly says, any stickers? No, I don't got any stickers. Stephanie says, good morning, everyone. Aaron says, Lane says, good morning. Good morning, hero. Lane, you're my hero. You are so brave with all those bees. And you always succeeded everything you're doing. Kelly says, I sent you stickers and magnets I made. That's why I asked for your address. Kelly, I haven't received anything yet. My mail doesn't come to around between 12 and 2. <coughs> Andy says, hello, Aaron. <coughs> 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 Landry's Little Farm says, morning, morning, Landry. Well, we'll give everybody until the quarter, quarter after before I share all my good news. And he says, how are you, Stephanie? And one of the... Ruth said, Crooked Brat. Becky, when you get back, you, you're going to think this is fun. Do when you get back, you'll think this is fun. You'll you'll laugh about this. I'll, 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 I'll give it away. All righty. All righty. Aaron says, I love your Saturday morning lies. All the cool kids hang out here. I get to talk to my friends. Stephanie says, I'm fine, handsome, and you? <laughs> Little Ridge Farm. Mark says, howdy, howdy, howdy. Kelly says, ha, ha, ha. It's true, Aaron. <laughs> And Andy says, I'm good. Stephanie says, it does. Did you cut your hair, Verna? Oh, I cut that a while back. It needs even up, but I cut it a while back. Almost tempted to shave it again. Hey, Erin, what's your count on your, or Christina, what's your count on your chicks? And anybody else hatch this week? And he says, I remember you cutting it. 
You cut some of it on live, LOL. Yep. Kelly says, I have some in lockdown now. Aaron and Christina are my hatching buddies. The ones that hatched last week, I got 10 of those left. Because I had 12, but two of them died recently. And he says she has one more week till lockdown. And uh, Kelly says, I have some in lockdown now. Um, but I can't go any further for 10 more minutes on my news. Then at the half hour mark, we're going to talk on a topic. Aaron says, we didn't unload them yet. Still have a few wet chicks. It's a lot. After lunch, we will unload the hatcher and get a count. Should be somewhere around 500. Yeah, it probably is, Aaron. And he says, oh, Verna, Dawn says, do you do wake up calls? Her alarm is not working. I know, but she texted me earlier that she was going to be here. Let me text her and say, where in the heck are you? Let me find her. Wait a minute. We're waiting for you, Dawn. I just text her. Landry, Landry says, we will hopefully have our first group of quail soon, courtesy of... Gidro's Urban Homestead. We had seven out of seven Sir Mama eggs a few days ago, LOL. First time ever doing it. Hatching is addictive. All people addicted to hatching have support group meetings at My Shire Farm September 3rd and 4th. You know what? Lonnie says, it is. I can't wait to do a big boy hatch like Aaron, LOL. You better have a lot of cages, Bill. And he says, I don't need any help not to hatch. I enjoy it too much. Exactly. You get your fix. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see if she answers when I call. I am so ornery. Hello? 
Hello, we're not able to answer the phone right now. So leave your name, your number, and a message, and we'll get back to you later. At the sound of the tone, leave your message. Don, this is Verna during live. Let's try to get hold of you. We're waiting on you. Mm-hmm. See, she didn't even answer her phone. Probably outside doing chores. And he says, wake up, Dawn. She said she was up earlier. Let me check Messenger. At 9.21. Oh, that was last night. Well, I tried. And he says, I don't need any help not to hedge. Oh, I read that. And he says, wake up, Dawn. And he says, Andy, I haven't had an empty incubator in years. Yeah, but how much land you got there, Aaron? And he says, oh, Aaron, that'd be fun. Pretty soon you're going to need to build a barn like Zach. Well, we got seven people in here and I see two, three people talking. And it says, I just sell or eat anything I don't want to keep to continue supporting my incubation, incubating addiction. And he says, I just bought my incubator about this time last year. Best mistake I made in a long time. Yep. I got four incubators. <laughs> Steve says, Sean, good morning. Good morning, cuz. And Andy's, oh, there's Dawn. Good morning, Berna. I heard your message, LOL. Wake up call. Aaron says, he's Steve. He's my cuz. <laughs> yeah, but Dawn, I did it during live stream. LOL. <laughs> And Dawn Silent and Andy, good morning. I guess Stephanie left. We got 10 likes and nine people in here. I feel good. Dawn says, I thought you did. And he says, I have four incubators now, too. Stephanie says, I'm here. Aaron says, Hey, Steve. Not he, Steve. <laughs> Autocorrect hates me. <laughs> Aaron says, hey, Dawn. Dawn says, starting my coffee and rounds. <laughs> 
Steve says, both quality. I am and hey back. Excuse me. Okay, you guys. My lockdown what my lockdown was on Tuesday. I've had 31 quail hats out of 45 so far. I put the booter back together and had them all in two separate booters. And he says, I have three little giants and the big round metal one that was my grandpa's. It's about a foot wide, I would say. When was the last time you used a big round metal one, Andy? So I can tell out of the 31, I've got some wilds, some Egyptians, and some more whites. And he says, I really build it, but I haven't used it. You need to run it through a test, Andy. And he said, it would hold about a thousand eggs, LOL. <laughs> <laughs> well, put as many as you can in there. So he says, you know what they say, if you build it, they will hatch. That's if you test it, they will hatch. <laughs> David says, what kind of incubator do you have, Verna? I have a Farm Innovation, a Hoover Bader, a Little Giant. I got one that's a no-name. I'll show you the top of it in just a second. Excuse me, Lucy. You're right up against my chair today. I've got this one, and I got another one. I haven't pulled it out yet to look at it. I've had it for a while. Andy says it takes up over half of my coffee table. Hey, if you got a plug near it, then you should be fine. Aaron says, Steve, I'll pick you up tomorrow. We need to head to my shire to start preparing to cook for quail cod. We can't be late. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting a little far ahead of yourself. Aaron says, Andy, that tells me you need a bigger coffee table. No, it only takes up half the coffee table. So that's only half of it. And he says, I don't know where to put it to hatch. It's bigger than my bathroom sink. <coughs> See, he says, ha ha, quail con, 133 days. I wouldn't think you'd need that much practice. They haven't even taken the pig off yet. I think they're going to um, butcher it at the farm. Roasted hole. Yeah, but they still got to gut it. 
And he says, I would clean off half of the kitchen table. I don't think my cat would knock it over. <laughs> Be a strong cat if he did. That's me, Lucy. That's mommy. I'm tapping my finger so Lucy thinks somebody's coming up the stairs. Okay, you know how we say repurpose, reuse on everything we do. David says, my wife is thinking of getting a nur Nurture Right 360. Is that a good one? Zach thinks it is, and a lot of people think it is. I don't know because I never had one. C says, remember, it's Andy's cat. And he says, it's too heavy. The lid is so is too, is so heavy, too. I would have to hand turn them. Uh, you need to find ways to put um, a turner in there. Okay. We can talk about Andy's incubator for 10 more minutes, and then we'll talk about the topic. And he says the cat's a big butthead for sure. He's the one that beats up my pit bull, lol. Yeah, dogs usually don't want to hurt the cat, so when the cat claws, they just back away. Lucy went after a groundhog yesterday. That daggone groundhog is probably weighed as much as Lucy did. I mean, it was about that big. No, Stephanie, she did not hurt it. She just likes to chase. Don says, David, I have used an NR360 for a year now. It's okay, depending on your indoor humidity, heat, and AC. Lots of learning to make it work for you. She says, uh, dinner. No, she didn't catch and kill. But I swear that thing's probably pretty close to... Her same weight. And he says, I seen two groups of baby groundhogs yesterday. They were so cute, I almost wanted to catch one. Lucy scared the dickens out of me. She went down the steep um, cliff down by the river chasing after it. Yeah, almost, Daddy. Almost don't count for horseshoes, hand grenades, atomic bombs, and dog farts. The only thing I was worried about, I was worried about Lucy getting bit and get, uh, getting rabies and that. And he said she'd probably feed them quail. No, nah, uh, quail eggs, maybe, but not the quail themselves. Excuse me. Oh, 
okay. Now, what I was saying is you know how I advocate that we use every part of the quail. So today's topic is about the eggshells, about different ways that you can use them. You can use eggshells in place of salt on ice that helps give you grip. You can put it in coffee grounds to buffer the acid. And then you take the spent grounds with the shells in it and put it in your garden. You can crush the shells and feed them back to your quail. You can roast your shells and toss a couple in for your smoothie. That's a lot cheaper than buying calcium pills. Other ways that you can boost your calcium is you can toss them in bread or baked goods once you crumble them. You can powder your eggshells and press them into tablet forms or for an acid. Great for using shells to plant seeds. Just a little bit of dirt in that shell. Get it damp, put a seed in it, and you're good to go. You can crumble the shells and add them to dust baths. Sunday says, how about flower pot dirt? That's what we call gardens. <coughs> and he says, oh, quail eggs. I left some out because I forgot to bring them in. Something ate them. My neighbor found a litter of baby coons in her shed. About six babies. I gave her my live trap. She didn't catch the mom. The mom moved the babies. Ugh. Okay. Um, number nine is you can crush them and put them in your homemade dog food. You can soak in water for animals and for your garden and for your pots, flower pots, Stephanie, because uh, water will soak some of the calcium off of off the eggshells. And you can use them for craft and jewelry. Aaron says, that's some great information, Berna. <laughs> Thank you. And it's all Dawn's fault. And Stephanie agrees. Yes, it is. No, really, Stephanie was agreeing. It was good information. Anybody else have an idea what else you can use your shells for? You know, quail eggshells are even easier for us to digest. We can absorb more of it than you can most other calcium. See, says, remember, this is shells from cooking and for hatch and from hatching. Yep. And he says, use the shell's membrane as an all-natural band-aid. That's true, too. Let me write that down. David says, I think it would be cool to make candles. That's in the crafting part. 
somehow what the eggshell shell. Yeah, you can you can put a little paraffin wax and do a little wick in there. C says that's correct. You can put the membrane on a splinter, and it's supposed to help pull the splinter out. And Mark says, Steve, it's good to see you. And it says, we make candles with the eggs that don't hatch. And he says, blade sharpening. Keep them in the freezer and use the clean and sharpen blender blades by adding water. Then pour the mixture into your compost bin. Better yet, Pour the mixture into your garden. The water and the powdered egg is great for your garden. She says, hey there, Mark. Did you find your goblin? Mark's laughing. Another thing, you can use it in your coffee grinder. It helps those blades as well. Any other ideas, people? See, making candles and that is what we, we call part of the crafts and jewelry. And he says... Canine remedy, I save my eggshells and let them dry out. When I have a good size amount, I crush them. Then I use a coffee grinder and make them into a powder if one of my dog gets diarrhea. Yep. That's like what I was saying about press them into a tablet form for an antacid. Stephanie says, what about rainwater and using it for rinsing your hair? Quail do not lay rainwater. The topic is eggshells. Christina says, David, I make candles with the shells. They're super cute and burn for almost two hours per egg. Yep, C said it right. Do not leave unattended. Stephanie, we're not talking about Rainwater, we're talking about eggshells right now. Christina says, Steve, yes, I put warning labels on the packages. Yeah, because I got a couple of your eggs. Egg candles. She says, what do you put the eggs in to make them stand upright? 
while burning. A little bit of sand, Steve. Mark says, Steve, I think Scooby-Doo solved the mystery. Andy says, I use to use some eggshells and water for my squirrel. Yep. And he's away from the keyboard. Christina says, I get stands to hold them when we sell at craft shows and farmer's markets. They're small and hold one egg. David says wax base maybe to hold egg in place. You can actually use sand to hold the egg in place. That's also fireproof. David. Just put some sand in a shell and put the eggs in the shell. Because if wax base it gets soft and melt and will not hold the egg in place. Let me show you a little something for an idea. Okay, see, I got sand on this plate. And you put the eggshell in it like that with the wax in it. And that sand uh, keep the heat off the paper plate. And keep the egg in place. She says, I have about 300 shells out in the shed drying out for another project for James to make. Maybe, maybe we'll switch projects. <laughs> David said, cool. So I have to show what I visualize.
Now, while you guys are coming up with something, I got to answer a call. Alrighty, I'm back. David says, I wonder if there's a plant that you could grow through the center of the shelves to grow an eggplant. That's why I said they're great seed starters. And he says, have you ever seen an eggplant? David says, yeah. Okay, well, I, well, I had to go through the, uh, the animal room. I had to dig out my other incubator. That's why I got all this dust all over me. Okay. There, now you guys have seen all my incubators. And this one just says incubator DMA 18S. Christina says, V, I sent you a pic on Messenger. Okay, let me get some of this stuff off me. And now look at the pick. Yeah, no. Oh, that is cute, Christina. Here's the one she was talking about. See the egg holder?
Yeah, Aaron, it's not clear. I can't see anything through it. Oh, uh, wait a minute. Let's see what. I lost where I was. And it says, it's a joke, LOL. You have had your head that far up a chicken's butt. And she says, so all of those, which is your favorite and why? Right now, I don't have a favorite. Because every time I pick a favorite, it poops out on me. And then I have to repair it and everything else. Christina says, we sell them in a set of six. And he says, oh, that makes a cute candle. And Stephanie says, I like that. Right now, it's my giant eagle and my little no-named one. David says, me too. And he says, was that a chicken egg or a quail egg candle? That was a quail egg candle. Then she asked where you find a holder for quail eggs. See, if you look at it, you can see the spots on it. That's a quail egg. And Christina said you find it on Amazon. Dave says, what kind of jewelry is made from quail eggs? Earrings and necklaces. She says, Christina's keeping it a secret. But you can make um, necklaces and earrings. And he says, yes, I see it now. So he says, that is pretty. Dawn says, David, I just bought a... Verado Lumina 8 that holds 32 quail eggs for $198, which is $10 more than a 360. When you buy the 360, you need the quail egg rails, and that's another 40. She says earrings, necklaces, you can make wreaths for your door, and a lots of other stuff. Yeah, I got the wreath that Ad made me on my door. Three of the eggs are missing off of it from the weather and and vandalism. <coughs> David says thanks. And today I sent some things out for Ed. Six wishbones, quail wishbones, and some copper. Don says, I love quail egg jewelry and decorations. 
you know, you blow out enough eggs instead of trimming, instead of stringing popcorn for your Christmas tree, you'll be able to uh, string quail eggs. And after live stream, it'll be time for me to take stuff out of my freeze dryer. I got some koi paws and blood meal and, and innards, as well as hunks of beef for Lucy. So in other words, everything that I got in the freeze dryer now is either for the garden or for Lucy. And if you have celadon eggs, then you can alternate between the standard quail eggs and the celadon eggs. John, I can see you using epoxy and making uh, a bunch of quail eggs in epoxy for a, a paperweight. John says, I think quail eggs on a Christmas tree would be really cute. So do I, mostly if you have celadon and standard eggs. And he says, that'd be cute with celadon and regular eggs. Yep. I wish somebody that has a three-dimensional printer would print out um, deviled egg trays for quail eggs. Dave says, how do you keep eggs from breaking on a necklace? You'll find out at QuailCon when Ed shows you. And he says, I may try that this Christmas. If you do, take a picture of it and let us see it. C says, I was going to do the paperweight, but haven't found the right foam yet. But also not actively searching. Well, you're a procrastinator. You might do that when you're 70. Don says, I put glitter on them. If you can stay in glitter. <laughs> Christina says, Steve sent you a screenshot of the stands. And he says, that's the reason I'm going to QuailCon, LOL. John says, we have a 3D printer. I may give that chore to hubby. How many little slots would you need for 24? Uh, you talking about 24 bites of que- um, deviled eggs? Or are you talking for 24 quail eggs? You would need 48 quail uh, slots for quail eggs. And he says, 100, Don, they are a hit, LOL. And if you use a piping bag and tip or just a sandwich bag where you cut out the corner and put your piping tip in there, you can make some fancy deviled eggs. C says the only problem with a deviled egg holder is the size. Most home printers won't make that size. 
if you can make um if you can make a nurture right quail egg turner on a 3d printer and then you could do uh a doubled egg plate. Don says 48 slots would be 24 eggs. That's right. C says, oh, darn. And here I thought I was the reason you were going to quail con. Ha ha. No, Andy and I got some trading too. And he says, yes, you, yes, you are, Steve. Don says, hubby is making tiny gears right now. They are the size of half of a quail's egg. See, if you had a 3D scanner, it would make it easier. And I need more coffee, people. My mouth is getting dry. Let's see. And he says, I bet he could make some, Don. Steve's handling, uh, handing out the coffee. Don says he has trouble making files. He gets someone to help him. Hey, that's great. At least he's got somebody that's helping him. That means he's learning. And he says, I don't know how a 3D printer works. So he says, just a decent indent for them to lay sideways. Yeah, you have to measure about that long with a slight indent. <coughs> In a pattern that goes around the plate that makes it look pretty. So it says, Steve, thank you. And he says, got to be able to scoop them out with your fingers. That's why you use a slight indent. It doesn't have to be the size of the egg. It just has to be an indent where I can hold on to it. You know, uh, at the first quail con, I tried to get Electric Iris to do one. And I've also tried to get Brandon to do one. But neither one of them wanted to even mess with it. 
And he says, got to be able to scoop them out with your fingers. I said that. And he says, I would think about one third of the size of an egg. Yep. Steve says, would be neat if they had legs so you can stack some up. Then when a tray is empty, you remove it and you have a fresh supply. Dawn says, I understand, Andy. Yeah, and you have the pointed sides going inward and the fat sides facing outward so that you can fit more along it. Yep, you can put you can put quail feet on the bottom. <laughs> so that they are stackable. God says I better make some notes, LOL. Andrew agrees, Don. And an Etsy store, too, Don. Or you have him make a whole bunch of them for QuailCon. C says he's away from the keyboard. You can talk about him for a, for a minute. And he says, oh boy, did you hear about Steve the other day? Oh no, what about Steve? I heard his grandson showed him up again. I think James and Lane are trying to outdo. Oh, no, Andy, you said he's crazy. No, Andy, he isn't crazy. That's not an insult. An insult would say he was sane. Stephanie says, how handsome is Steve? Well, you would have to buy a ticket to go to QuailCon to find out, Stephanie. Don says, Andy, I heard something about Steve. I wonder if it's the same thing you heard. Aaron says, I wasn't surprised that James they had to teach him a few things. Yeah, because Lane's teaching you about the bees, ain't he, Aaron? Stephanie wants to know about how much the tickets are. Hold on, Stephanie, and I'll drop the link. Mm, let me see. It's a two-day event, Stephanie. There you go. And if you really want to learn something, Stephanie, you go, you do this. Adults in uh, 18 and over are $40 a person. Yep, 
And like I said, that ticket's good for a two-day event. Yes, Sandy, Stephanie's only 15 minutes away. She's taken me out there before. And he says, that's awesome. So he says, plus you get to meet all these awesome people. And you'll probably have your son with you. So that it cost you a total of $80. Then if you want to have the barbecue or they call the quail dinner, you don't have to have quail if you don't want because they roast the hog and everything else. And that's $15 a person. See something here. Wait a minute, let me double check here. What's wrong one? No, well, that's a camping pass, it's $40. It's $55 per person. Dinner's fifteen dollars. Time and Timbers says, Good morning, V and all. Good morning, Jasmine. Yeah, it's fifty five dollars for Quilcon, fifteen dollars for the dinner, and forty if you are camping. And he says, good morning, Jasmine, Aaron, and said, hey, Jasmine. And don't forget, I'm bringing some koi there, too, for people to try. I should have at least six of them. He says, good morning, teacher. Jasmine at, at Time in Timber Homestead. Jasmine says, back, my app was glitching. <laughs> you know what? I got to fix something here. There we go.
Desmond says, hi, Aaron, Andy, and Steve. <laughs> okay, I'll do a recap on the eggshells. You know how quail, you know, I showed a picture about how you could use every part of the quail. Showed a biz video of it. So the first thing you can use, use you can use quail eggshells and place the salt on ice for traction. See, says so James will be mad he missed Jasmine. She's his favorite person. PJ says, good morning. Two and chores again. Never ending process. You got that right, PJ. Aaron says, good morning, PJ. Steve says, good morning, PJ. Andy says, hello to PJ. Number two, you put coffee grounds to buffer the... You put eggshells in your coffee grounds when you're making coffee to take the um, acid out of the coffee. Then you take the spent grounds that have the shells in them and put them in your garden. You can crush the eggshells and feed them back to your quail. You can roast the shells and toss in a capsule or press it into um, a pill form. For an acid. You can roast the shells and toss a, a couple in your for your, your smoothie. You can also toss in bread or other baked goods. They're great for using shells to plant seeds with. You can grind the shells and add them to dust baths. You can also grind them and add them to homemade dog food. You can soak it in the water for animals in the garden. You can use them for crafts and jewelry. And you can use a shell membrane as a natural band-aid. You know, maybe I should make a whole bunch of antacids for Quellcon. Because I got some gel capsules that I can shove it in. Aaron says, are you saying that, I mean, she says, are you saying that Aaron and I can't cook? No, because what I'm saying is people are going to be gluttons, so they'll need an antacid for their acid reflux from eating too much. And he says a handful of broken eggshells and two slices of lemon in a little cheesecloth bag with your clothes in the washer will prevent the soap deposits that turn the white clothes gray. Hmm. Okay, that's number 13. Slices of lemon. And cheesecloth bag. To prevent whites from yellowing.
She says, oh, no, we can't stop at 13. We need one more. Well, I've already got putting it in your garden. And he says, pan scrubber. Crust eggshells work great to scrub pans that have food stuck in them. Yes, yeah, so they'll break up, but they still do the job. In other words, it's like using it as sand, like you do sand. And since you don't want soap on your iron skillets, it'd be great to use them um, to wash your iron skillets with. So that's 14 things we got. Andy says sidewalk chalk, five to eight eggshells, finely powdered, one tablespoon of hot water, one tablespoon of flour, food coloring optional, mix and pack into toilet tissue rolls and let dry. All righty, give me a minute to write that one down. Where is my blue pen? All I'm doing right now is finding my red pins. Reach over and grab another blue pen. Now nah, I found it. That's number 15. I think you need more than five to eight. It just might be the next next book.
All righty. Dawson's says, sidewalk chalk is cool, Andy. Andy's going after more coffee. And she's, oh, Verna, can make a book of these. Yes, that might, maybe that'll be the next book. Cesar, for the chalk, I guess you'd have to keep mixing until you find the roll. <laughs> and he says, I think that is chicken eggs, not quail eggs on the chalk. Well, that's why I would say three to four dozen eggs. Okay, and yeah, I'll, I'll look at that in a minute. C says, quail cookbook that you can't eat. Well, don't eat the chalk. And he says, I think I'll do the chalk for my granddaughter this summer. Okay, Andy, I'll look at that later. And um, we'll go through that, too. Just chalk would be a great way to use up patched eggs. Yeah, it would be. Because that way you wouldn't have to bake it to get rid of germs. After Lucy goes out at noon, and when she comes back, I have to lay down for a little bit because I've been up all night. But I got 31 new chicks, so that means I have 41 chicks. Total right now. Another thing, just grinding them up and putting them to the side of your feed dish for your quail, they'll eat that like crazy. And he says, I put my eggshells in the microwave for about 30 seconds to dry them out. Well, a microwave lots of times will gather moisture. So what I do is when I have the oven on, and I get done, when I get done baking, I... Put the eggshells in and shut the oven off. Then when they cool, they're ready to go. And he says, I don't use my oven that much. Well, see, I do a little baking when weather permits it and... My time permits it. She said, but that's a good idea. Yeah, if you ever use your oven to roast or roast or make some biscuits or anything like that, after you pull the food out, throw your trays of quail eggs in, and shut the, uh, close the door and shut the oven light off. I mean, oven off. And it's just that cooling there will turn the egg like this on the inside. See that where it's gives you a little cook spot. See, says, I wish I had an oven. I put mine outside in the sun to dry out. Well, that's good. And he says, right when them two line up.
God says, my dehydrator is sitting on the countertop. I tossed my eggshells in on high for 30 minutes while I cook breakfast. That's a good idea, too. I need to make some jerky. Well, you guys, I got to see what that hatchling's hollering about. They just wanted attention, just like any other kid. As Andy says, I'm going to start Amish Friendship Bread Cake again to help use eggs up. That's a good idea. And you know what? You should have some of that to pass out around QuailCon. Don says, I need to make turkey jerky again for the dog treats. Don that's a great idea, Andy. She says, I keep buying hamburgers to make jerky, but my daughter keeps using it to cook for food. At this rate, I'll never get jerky. <laughs> Andy says, now I want to make some rabbit jerky. Yeah, I think when I butcher this bunch of cooey, I want to use the belly flaps for our jerky. Steve's away from the keyboard again. J.J. Willis says, hi, all. Sorry I'm late. Hey, J.J., we don't take attendance. You just had to watch earlier where we gave out 15 ways to use quail eggs. And he says, I could, Verna. Good idea. Yeah, I'm always full of ideas, Andy. You should know that by now. JJ's laughing. John says, good morning to JJ. And he says, I love rabbit belly flap jerky. Well, see, another thing is, I'm going to, when I skin these off, I'm going to skin this, the head as well. And throw that in for bone broth. So I can get the cooked meat off of that, and I'll probably take the cooked meat and make that into either jerky or quiz salad sandwiches. Dawn said, J.J., Vernon gave me a wake-up call this morning because my alarm clock died. The new one won't be here until Tuesday. And J.J. saying hi to everybody. And everybody's saying hi to J.J. My jaw is tired for some reason. I guess I'm talking too much. And he says, I like it best plain, really. No flavor for belly flap jerky. PJ says, hi, hi. Well, I love my jerky recipe because I use balsamic vinegar, 
and soy sauce and garlic and whatever else I grab and throw in the bag. Shake it up real good, decode everything. Put in the refrigerator for 24 hours. Shaking every time I go and get me milk for my coffee. Jay says, I'm getting ready to finish my quail shelter. It's been a long process. JJ, you need to post that on Facebook. Or do a video of it here. That's my notification noise, you guys. So when you hear that anime type of uh, snoring, it means I have a notification. Well, I got two brooders up and I got chicks in them. I will either at CC or YouTube. I don't know what you mean by CC. And Andy's laughing at my notification sound. Jasmine says, back again. Welcome back, Jasmine. <laughs> C says the notification sound sounded like a piggy. David says, I thought that sound was cute. Oh, it was cooey. Okay. I think he's trying to say. And C says, so did he. No, the cooey are quiet today. I guess they were happy with me feeding them just before I started. And he says, for a second, I was wondering why, what new animal she had. <coughs> Jasmine says she sold 40 chicks and they had to grab some hay for the new goats. We are driving to go get now. Ooh, I got to see a picture of those, Jasmine. Jasmine needs to do some more videos on all her goats. Jasmine says their names are Pookie Moon Pie and Glamour. Talking about Glamour, I'll give you guys a throwback at my Glamour shots when I was about 35 years old. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Ah, here they are. There you guys go. Glamour shots. And he says, way to go, Jasmine. Jasmine says, there any... Okay, I thread that. Jasmine says, yes, Jasmine does, LOL. And he saying, yes, Jasmine. CC, oh, community website. Okay. <coughs> Jasmine says, cat call whistle. <laughs> JJ says, nice picture. Everybody was shocked. See, I used to look cool when I was younger. And it was all my belated husband's idea. 
He wanted me to have some glamour shots. <laughs> JJ says, we all did, Verna. <coughs> now, see, if I want, if I want and got all made up for QuailCon, nobody would recognize me. Nikki says, good morning. I've been lost in my own world this morning. Good morning, Nikki. And everybody's saying hi to Nikki. JJ, my kids got mad at me for their glamour shots. They said moms aren't supposed to be sexy. Well, you know what your kids, you know what you tell your kids? If it wasn't for me being sexy, you wouldn't be alive. Everybody saying hi to Nikki. My daughter's got a kick out of my glamour shots. And Jasmine's laughing at us. JJ. JJ says, LOL, they were too young, but I like that response. That's right. If you weren't sexy, they wouldn't have been born. Jasmine says, Luke just about spit his drink out with that comment, V. <laughs> Luke is your brother, Jasmine? Or your SO? Luke is my hobby. He's listening while we drive. <laughs> well, if he was driving, <laughs> I almost caused a wreck. I'm sorry. Hello, Luke. Now tell me if I am wrong, Luke. <laughs> Jesus is driving, drinking, and laughing at me. Lord, help us. <laughs> JJ's AFK, but listening. She's away from the keyboard, but she's still listening. Well, Jasmine, at least you're not beyond help. C says, Luke said, Jasmine doesn't need a glamour shot. That's right. She's glamorous as she is all the time. Jasmine's laughing. I don't know whose remark she's laughing at, Steve. Yours or mine? Jen says, Luke apparently agrees, Steve. <laughs> oh, she's laughing at both. <laughs> she says, don't worry about me, Luke. It's Jasmine you have to be concerned with. No, it's James. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. It's James that he has to be concerned with. 
Yeah, James. Between James and Lane, it's still her away from you, Luke. Luke's probably getting ready to go to his game. So how many goats do you currently have, Jasmine? And how many do you have, PJ? Jasmine says, I sold all the fresh quail hatchlings. Got more going into lockdown. Yeah, but that's dodging the goat question. How many nannies you got, Jasmine? See, I'm not selling mine because I got to build up my cubby. I got to have 18, 36, 48 before I start doing hat um freezer cap yeah this is four bucks and five doughs one buckling and one doling that's a lot of bucks adding these two doughs and then one more doling She says she's not keeping all the bucks, only three. So is it one buck going to freezer camp or are you going to sell them as... Uh, I forget what the name of this for when you gilded one. A weather, yeah. That's what I couldn't remember. A gilding is a horse. A weather is a goat. Forty-eight. Three cages. Yeah. I know I have on the last hatch, I got some wilds, some Egyptians, and some whites. If the baby buck doesn't sell in two weeks, he will be weathered and raised for meat. Yep. Yeah, because you whatever you're going to have for meat, you want to make him a wither. Because you can't get that stink out of him.
Bruno, what egg mix did you get? I like that mix. It's uh, the jumbo variety. I might have some Egyptians in there. I don't know for sure. I mean, I might have some Italians in there, but I don't know for sure. Tim says, I have some of Zach's Egyptian fees in the incubator and a bunch of my own mix. Yuppers. She says, I can't get my wilds to be wild because I keep using the gras feed as the male because they are larger. <laughs> and he says, I'll be getting some eggs from Jasmine next week. Are you going to get some of her uh, regular eggs, or are you going to get some of her celadon eggs? Jasmine says, yes, yay. So you guys live pretty close together. Don says, I called an Egyptian hen yesterday. She weighed out at 15.1 ounce. She has so much fat on her, it greased up the sink. I never saw such a soft, yucky fat. So what was you feeding her, and how old was she, Dawn? Because they don't start getting fat on them until they're about three months old. And he says, celadon egg. That's from her mixed cage. Well, that's cool. Dawn says, Andy, that is already here. Wow. She says, fat and yucky. I don't put those two words together. Dawn says, I think she was about seven or eight months. She was on 16% layer feed. Excuse me. Jasmine says, I am dreading the big chore of cleaning out the big aviary. Ugh, it's spring and it's time. Put it on your compost pile. Start all over again. I think lack of sleep is finally catching up with me. Yasm said, exactly, V. And he says, I know when I feed my rabbits enough too much when I butcher. Yeah, you know, if you get them too fat, then they won't get pregnant. Because the fat will choke the ovaries. 
Dawn says, I have processed birds older than her and never saw this. They've had fat, yes, but not loose fat that you could just push off the skin and bones. Now, you guys saw on my video about when I used all the quail, and I explained which was for what. So I freeze-dried the innards for dog food. Um, then the legs and the spines for bone broth. Then... Um, the other thing, I, I dehydrated the heads and the wings for dog treats. So I used every part of the quail. And that's why today's topic was every part of what you can use the eggshells for. John says she never laid an egg and then got mean to the roost. So in the fridge she sits. Now I have two more five and a half week olds I have to call tomorrow. Andy says, maybe she was too fat to make eggs. That could be. C says, I'm supposed to call a group next weekend, but we all know that won't happen. Did you get your NPIP yet, Steve? Jasmine says, Andy, how do you slim down your overweight rabbit does? One of my Americanas won't settle, and I think it's because she's too fat. You limit their feed to a half a cup a day. Don't give them any fruits and give them all vegetables. Andy says, I have a group I should have butchered about 10 weeks ago, Steve, LOL. And Jasmine says, king of procrastination, asshole. I have to have my apartments and spick and span order before um, I go to bed Thursday night. Yeah, this is why, V, because Section 8 does their experience. Um, inspection on me on the 28th, which is next Friday. John says, I talked to Andy yesterday about blood or animal smell in my nose after I process. It hangs on most of the night, too. Surprisingly, Andy, Andy smells it, too. Anyone else get it? Yeah, but you know what you do for that, Dawn? Put a little Vicks in your nostrils before you start doing it. Then take a shower after you're done processing. Jasmine says, ah, gotcha. Make the inspector some cookies. LOL. No freaking way. Because they're, they're going to be jacking up my rent again. They already jacked it up when the landlord increased it by $100 a month. And he said, cut her feed down and replace it with hay. Breed her if she loses the babies. Breed her right back the same day. She should be back in shape after that. She says, wonder if the inspections have a list of landlords that have yards. No, they don't because I got their most current list and all they have is apartments. Now, if I can find somebody that has a yard and approach them and talk them into going to Section 8, that would be a different story. John says, I ended up sniffing peppermint old real deep. And it took care of it this time. Jasmine says, thanks, Andy. I'll try that. 
Yeah, that's what I heard is you only give them a, a half a cup of feed once a day instead of free feeding. I'm fattening up this bunch of cooey. So when I process them um, tonight and tomorrow, they'll be nice and fat. They all got cantaloupe last night. Don says, I mean peppermint oil, LOL, sorry. Well, you can use Vicks too. A little Vicks in your nose. Do you use food grade peppermint oil or do you use um, oil grade for um, your oil pots? And he says, my hubby says, add some cannabis in them cookies and it make him happy when he is inspecting you. Ha, ha, ha. She says, I never noticed the smell. John says, I thought it was just extra sensitive to it. I use food grade essential oil from Eden's Garden. Not right now. John says, Steve, I only notice it when I quit processing. Um, as you wash your hands, Use some coconut oil on your hands, too. That gets rid of the lingering scent in your hands. <coughs> and he says... Dawn, drop a few drops in the bag before you close it up. I tap on the floor or or make a little phone call to tell somebody, come on, take my garbage out. Because I had to do it all inside. John says, I use gloves when I process because the feathers don't stick to my hands as much as when they are bare for some reason. Do you, do you ever try to do um, skin on quail, just plucking it straight without dipping it? Because Landry um, was doing a dry pluck on the goose, or a duck rather, at Aaron and Christina's house. When they were teaching her how to pluck the duck. Don says, no, I haven't. Uh -huh. 
So you can wait till I finish this cigarette. No, you haven't what, Don? No, you haven't tried. Okay, you haven't tried dry plucking. Okay. And I don't like trying to defer the cooey. That's too much of a pain in the butt. And he says, I haven't plucked a quail yet either. Well, I'm going to be at least six weeks until I end up plucking a quail. So he says, my daughter prefers to pluck. I prefer to skin. Well, skinning is my fastest way to do anything. And I found out what I'm calling cool cooey. Dawn says, I wasn't interested in plucking. Nikki says, I don't even pluck my chickens. Andy says, skinning seems fast. She says, I find that when I do it, I must be too fast. I can still feel the heart beating. Dawn says, skinning is faster and cleaner to do. I agree. Um, David says, I want to try an attachment that goes on a drill to pluck. On uh, Christina's uh, sew and tear, I think she has a video using that, David. I need a stronger drill than the one I got. John says, Steve, yuck. Feel the heat be heart beating? I know when I start gutting, sometimes the leg muscle jumps in my hand, and that freaks me out, LOL. She says, I have all the components to make a mini plucker. I just needed to put it together one day. We know, Steve, we've been waiting a year for you to put it together. JJ's laughing that we've been waiting a year. And he says, I always try to get the rabbits done fast enough to still have the heart beating. When I call the quail, I do the bloodless calling method that stick their heads in the quail cone. Stick them in the quail cone, then I can cut their heads off. And I let them finish bleeding out before I process them. But the cooey, I found out the easiest way for me to process them is knock them out with the light tap of the hammer. And then I cut their juggler. Let them bleed out. J 
JJ says, sounds like hubby. I waited one and a half weeks for hubby to cut a metal roof for quail shelter. Yesterday, I used 10 snips and got it done. David said, is the quail cone a funnel? I'll show you one just right now. Give me a minute to see where I put it. Right here. It's not a funnel. I got two of these attached to a two by four that I put on this laundry thing that I wedge it on. But they have to be out when you put them in here because those little brats can twist their necks up and come out of that comb before you can even sneeze. <coughs> John says, mine go into the cone, bleed out after cutting the heads off. Then I skin. When I get to cleaning the guts, the muscles jump, and that just freaks me out. John, that's why I'll do a bloodless call, put it in the cone, cut the head off, walk away, go grab another one, and do the same thing to that. And then I go to the first one and skin it and gut it then i'll go to the second one skin it and gut it and then it's time to start all over again c says i mean don says david i use a one liter bottle verna got me on them they are great c says you can just you can use a funnel you just have to cut the skinny spout off JJ says, I would like to try the cones. New York Attorney makes his own. Yeah, you can make your own. You can even use a half gallon milk carton. Don says, she changed to a metal one. She could tell you about the plastic bottle upside down. Yeah, that's you just cut the uh, two-liter bottle in half, then cut off the neck to where it's just big enough. And he says, I just 44-ounce takeout cups as cones. John says, Verna, I do the same thing with two cones. And he says, use, not just. Oh, okay, you, I thought I said that, you use. I use 44. C says you can also use a mini traffic cone like they use for kids sports about a dollar each. JJ says good ideas here. Yeah, this chat is always full of good ideas. JJ. You guys, it's after 12 o'clock. It's time for me to answer a phone call then take Lucy for her phone call y'all have a blessed weekend and see you tomorrow night on my Shire live stream JJ says thank you for the live made my morning cheerful well that makes me feel good JJ thank you Be blessed and be safe. Bye-bye.